This article is in the process of revision and expansion. The Culper Ring was a spy ring organized by American Major Benjamin Talmadge under orders from General George Washington in the summer of 1778. During British occupation of New York City at the height of the American Revolutionary War, the Culper name was suggested by Washington who devised it from Culpeper County, Virginia. The two main members of the ring, Abraham Woodhull and Robert Townsend, used Samuel Culper, Sr., and Samuel Culper, Jr., respectively, as aliases. Tallmadge was in direct contact with and control of the ring, but Washington often directed its operations. Tallmadge was referred to by the alias of John Bolton. The ring's task was to send messages to General Washington about the activities of the British Army in New York City, the British headquarters and base of operations. The members of the ring operated mostly in New York City, Long Island, and Connecticut. The ring's covert operations started in about late October 1778 and continued through the British evacuation of New York in 1783, but its heyday was between 1778 and 1781. The Culper Ring provided valuable information to General Washington including that the British planned a surprise attack on the newly allied French forces under Lieutenant General Rochambeau at Newport, Rhode Island before the French could fully recover and set up defences after their arduous sea journey to America, that the British planned to counterfeit American currency on the actual paper used for the Continental Dollars, prompting the Continental Congress to retire the bills that British Major General William Tryon's raid in Connecticut in July 1779 was a diversion to induce Washington to divide his forces so British Lieutenant General Sir Henry Clinton could attack them piecemeal, and that a high-ranking American officer, soon shown to be American Major General Benedict Arnold, had been plotting with British Major John Andre to surrender the garrison and to turn over the vitally important American fort at West Point, New York, on the Hudson River to the British. The Culper Ring is often credited for the exposure of an attempt on Washington's life but as no official record of an attempt exists, it is conjecture. Background British Army occupation of New York City under pressure from American colonial forces, the British Army under General William Howe evacuated Boston, Massachusetts, on March 17, 1776 and sailed for Halifax, Nova Scotia, to reorganize. Before Howe's forces had completed their departure, American General George Washington had begun to move his troops to New York City, where most had arrived by mid-April to begin preparing defenses. Washington correctly suspected that Howe would return to New York City to make it the British base of operations. General Howe's troop ships began to arrive at New York Harbor on June 28, 1776. On July 3, 1776, Howe's men began to land at undefended Staten Island. General Howe's brother, Vice Admiral Richard Howe, arrived the following week to take charge of the British naval force. British and Hessian soldiers continued to arrive until August 12, 1776. Washington did not have a spy network at New York that he could count on for intelligence as he could from the many patriots that had previously organized to spy on the British Army at Boston. On the other hand, the British could depend on the many loyalists at New York City for intelligence. So Washington divided his smaller force in order to defend several possible locations on Long Island and Manhattan Island, where the British might attack. When General Howe had all of his forces in place, his initial moves did not alert Washington to the full danger that the Continental Army faced because Washington's intelligence operatives seriously underestimated British troop strength. On August 22, 1776, 
British Army troops from Staten Island landed on Long Island to begin the New York and New Jersey campaign to drive the Continental Army from New York City. First, on August 27, 1776, the British overwhelmed the American defenders at the Battle of Long Island, forcing the Americans back to their fortifications on Brooklyn Heights. On August 30, 1776, before the British could attack the outnumbered and demoralized Americans, Washington's troops quietly withdrew from Long Island to Manhattan. On September 15, General Howe attacked the Continental Army force stationed at New York City, then located only on Lower Manhattan, and landing at Kipps Bay, drove the Americans out of the city and captured all of the cannons they had there. Despite the American victory at the Battle of Harlem Heights the following day, September 16, 1776, Howe forced the Continental Army to abandon Manhattan entirely through a series of maneuvers and engagements, most significantly the Battle of Fort Washington, where the British took almost 3,000 prisoners on November 16, 1776. By early December, the Americans had been forced to withdraw across New Jersey to Pennsylvania. The British controlled New York City and made it their military headquarters and base of operations until the war ended in 1783. According to some sources, Washington's crucial successful attack on the Hessian garrison at Trenton, New Jersey, on December 26, 1776 was greatly aided by an American spy of Irish descent, John Honeyman who provided information on the Hessian camp and the Hessians' planned Christmas celebration and gave the Hessians false intelligence about the condition of the Continental Army. In an article for the CIA's Studies in Intelligence Journal, however, Alexander Rose debunks the Honeyman story tracing it to his daughter and grandson. Although the story had been widely accepted, Rose notes that David McCulloch took no note of it in his book 1776. He also quotes historian David Hackett Fisher in Washington's Crossing as stating, The story might possibly be true but in the judgment of this historian, the legend of Honeyman is unsupported by evidence. No use of it is made here. Early American intelligence operations in New York City before how moved from Staten Island. Washington received information of varying utility from individual agents, such as Lawrence Maskell, who obtained some intelligence on Staten Island before August 23. After evacuating his troops from Brooklyn Heights, Washington asked Brigadier General William Heath and New York Militia General, soon to be Governor of New York and later Vice President of the United States George Clinton to set up a channel of information on Long Island. Washington did not yet try to establish permanent agents behind enemy lines. His next agent, the untrained and easily recognized Captain Nathan Hale, was captured during his effort to obtain intelligence in New York City by the cunning and ruthless Loyalist Ranger, Lieutenant Colonel Robert Rogers, and summarily executed by the British on September 22, 1776. By January 1777, Washington thought that civilians would attract less attention as spies and that they must recruit other agents to gather intelligence. He asked William Dewar, a member of the New York Committee for Detecting and Defeating Conspiracies of the New York Provincial Congress to recommend someone to be the agent. Dewar recommended a colleague, Nathaniel Sackett. Washington appointed Captain Benjamin Tallmadge, a classmate and friend of Nathan Hale, to be Sarkis' contact with the Army. Tallmadge was promoted to Major on April 7, 1777. His regiment was called from Connecticut to join the main body of the Continental Army and he had little time to devote to intelligence work. Sackett had developed some advancements and new methods for spying, such as keeping an agent in enemy territory and finding a means of regular communication, which he detailed in a letter to Washington on April 7, 1777, the date of Tallmadge's promotion. Sackett also recruited a few agents, whose identities remain unknown. 
He discovered that the British were building flat-bottomed boats to use in a campaign against Philadelphia. Sackett had not produced enough correct intelligence fast enough for Washington, however, and he was soon paid and dismissed. Early in 1777, American Colonel Elias Dayton set up a spy network on Staten Island to work in parallel with an established American intelligence agent. John Mercer, British Army occupation of and withdrawal from Philadelphia Sackett was correct about Howe's intention to move against Philadelphia. Howe moved his force by water to head of Elk, Maryland on Chesapeake Bay because he believed the American defenses on the Delaware River were too strong to attack. Washington failed to stop the British at the Battle of Brandywine on September 11, 1777 and the British took Philadelphia on September 26. The focus of intelligence gathering switched to Philadelphia and Washington assigned Major John Clark, who had returned to the army from successfully spying on Long Island but had been severely wounded in a skirmish before the Battle of Brandywine. Clark set up a successful network of spies but his unhealed wound and constant exertions wore him out and he had to retire to a desk job. By the late spring of 1778, the British found Philadelphia too difficult to supply and too vulnerable to attack. Their new commander-in-chief, General Sir Henry Clinton, was ordered to leave Philadelphia and defend New York City. France had allied with the Americans, which increased the possibility of an attack on the British at New York. Clinton began to evacuate Philadelphia on June 10, 1778. Clinton's forces retreated to Sandy Hook, New Jersey and from there, they took ships for New York City, which they had already occupied for almost two years. Establishment of the Culper Ring Initial formation The focus of intelligence gathering returned in New York, where Washington then lacked a spy network. On August 7, 1778, Washington received a letter from Lieutenant Caleb Brewster at Norwalk, Connecticut, with an offer to report on the enemy, to which Washington cautiously agreed and replied with advice. On August 27, Brewster sent his first report including the condition of British warships after a storm and some battles with French warships at the beginning of the Battle of Rhode Island. Brewster also reported that several regiments of British troops were boarding ships to take them to Newport, Rhode Island. Washington assigned General Charles Scott to handle Brewster and find additional agents. He also asked Major Benjamin Tallmadge to assist Scott. Scott had many other duties and he found intelligence work uninteresting. So Tallmadge did most of the intelligence work and Washington soon directly asked Tallmadge to recruit people who could be trusted to collect intelligence in New York City. Tallmadge recommended Abraham Woodhull of Setauket in Suffolk County on Long Island as a contact for Brewster. Woodhull was a childhood friend of both Brewster and Tallmadge. A few months earlier, Woodhull had been taken prisoner by an American ship and charged with illegal trading, of which he was in fact guilty. He was held in Connecticut until Tallmadge quietly talked with Governor Jonathan Trumbull, who released Woodhull. Before Woodhull left Connecticut, Tallmadge spoke with him about joining Washington's Secret Service. In a dinner with Washington and Scott on August 25, Tallmadge convinced Washington that Woodhull was trustworthy. At that dinner the officers devised the alias, Samuel Culper, for Woodhull, with Washington suggesting Culper as a variation of Culpeper County, Virginia, where Washington had worked as a surveyor in his youth. Tallmadge was not getting along well with the difficult Scott and their approaches to spying differed. Scott wished to continue using single mission agents to sneak in and out of enemy lines while Tallmadge favored embedding spies in enemy territory and establishing a secure line of communication back to base. 
When Scott lost three of five agents sent to spy on the British in New York City in early September, Washington decided that tool Madge's methods should be used, and as early as October 22, was communicating directly with tool Madge about setting up a network with Woodhull and Brewster. On October 29, Scott resigned as chief of intelligence and Washington assigned tool Madge to lead the intelligence network. Early operations at first, Woodhull would go to New York City every few weeks to gather intelligence. The presence of Mary Underhill, his married sister, in the city gave Woodhull a reason to visit. On October 31, he was questioned at a British checkpoint, increasing his anxiety about the dangerous mission. Nonetheless, he returned to Seth Halkett with valuable information about the British supply fleet. On November 23, 1778, Woodhull provided a precise report on the identity of British units, numbers of troops and dispositions in New York City. Proving his worth as a spy, Woodhull soon recruited his brother-in-law, Amos Underhill, who ran a boarding house in the city with his wife Mary, to gather intelligence but Underhill's reports were often too vague to be of much value. At first, Woodhull had to return to Setauket to pass messages to Caleb Brewster to take to Tall Madge or to receive messages from Tall Madge via Brewster. By December 1778, Tall Madge set up couriers, at first Jonas Hawkins, then in the early summer mainly Austin Rowe who would take messages the 55 miles between New York and Setauket to pass them to Brewster. The courier's task was to get the letters to Brewster who would pick up messages at one of six secluded coves near Setauket and, with his rotating whaleboat crews, take them across the Sound to Tall Madge at Fairfield, Connecticut. Tall Madge would then take them to Washington's headquarters. This time-consuming task was replaced in January 1779 by the assignment of express riders to take the messages from Tall Madge to Washington. Local tradition claims that Anna Strong, a resident of Setauket and a friend and neighbor of Abraham Woodhull, helped pass along messages from the spy ring by posting pre-arranged signals to indicate when one of the spies was ready to submit intelligence. If Strong hung a black petticoat on her clothesline, it meant Brewster had arrived in town in his whaleboat. Next to that she would hang a quantity of white handkerchiefs. The specific number of handkerchiefs indicated one of six hiding places where Brewster might be located. Abraham Woodhull used strong signals to meet Brewster or to drop messages at one of the meeting places. Historian Richard Welch writes that the tradition of the clothesline signal is unverifiable but it is known that the British had a woman at Seth Halkett, who fits Anna's profile under suspicion for disloyal activities. Brewster occasionally would add his own report to the Culper messages. In a January 1779 report received by Washington in early February, Brewster sent some information about naval matters and boat building at New York City and warned that local loyalists were outfitting privateers for operations on Long Island Sound. Brewster's message about naval matters was with a message from Woodhull which precisely described the British regiments and commanders at the northern tip of Manhattan, totaling about 8,500 men. Woodhull also reported on British boat building, confirming Brewster's report. Tall Madge and Washington thought that the boats might be to give New York Royal Governor and Major General William Tryon, who already had conducted a raid during the winter, transport for an attack by water, possibly against Connecticut. Through spring 1779 Woodhull became increasingly anxious about being discovered and did little in May and June. On June 5, 1779, John Woolsey, a Long Island privateer who was captured by British in order to secure Burrell, told British officers he had heard Abraham Woodhull was up to something dubious. While Woodhull was away in New York City, Colonel John Graves Simcoe, commander of the Queen's Rangers, came to Setauket to look for him. 
Not finding Woodhull at home, Simcoe's men attacked and beat Woodhull's father, Judge Richard Woodhull. Abraham Woodhull escaped to rest because a loyalist militia officer, Colonel Benjamin Floyd, who had married a distant relative, Ruth Woodhull, a sister or cousin of New York militia brigadier General Nathaniel Woodhull, vouched for him. In late June 1779, Washington sent a letter to Tallmadge in which he identified George Higday as a possible operative to relieve Woodhull in New York City. The British had intercepted a June 13 letter from Washington referring to C underscore 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 S A liquid and Tallmadge. On July 2, British cavalry under the command of Colonel Bannister Tarleton attacked Tallmadge's camp and captured his horse and some papers including the letter mentioning Higday. They were trying to capture Tallmadge himself because they now knew he was head of Washington's intelligence operation. The second letter, captured from Tallmadge, confirmed that an agent, C underscore, blank, was operating in New York City and that Tallmadge was the chief intelligence officer for Washington. Higday escaped execution but would be of no use to Washington, or Clinton who tried to recruit him as a double agent, as a spy. Woodhull reported that after the June incident at Setauket, he could not continue to operate in New York City because he was still under suspicion but he had a new agent for New York City lined up and would go to New York to finalize arrangements with him.